Good evening. My name is Peter Mamagos from Beyond the Enemy Gates Ministries and Belito Christian Center. Let me know if you're joining me tonight. Let me know where you're coming from. And please share the stream if you will. Tonight we're going to deal with a prayer nugget uh, on dealing with the spirit of rejection. I'm going to chat a little bit while we come on. All of us, every one of us, have been affected by the spirit of rejection or rejection spirits. Hi, Taryn. Welcome. Hi, Nelius. Good to see you guys. Um, and, you know, it normally comes in at a young age. It starts. And unless it's dealt with and unless we address it, the rejection spirits remain attached to your life and you can find people of 50, 60 uh, years old that still suffer from rejection. And one of the areas, hi Lenny, welcome, good to see you. Um, one of the areas uh, that the spirit of rejection is evident in is when you take offense. Um, and we'll discuss that a little bit tonight too in uh, conjunction with the spirit of rejection. And uh, we're going to address two areas, uh, spirits of rejection, where they can come in from, okay? And then, hi uh, Francis, welcome, good to see you. Hi uh, Katie, good to see you from Finland, um, if I'm correct. Uh, one of the Scandinavian countries. I was actually thinking, we're going to talk about it a little bit tonight on self-rejection. That's the next point. We're going to speak about self-rejection. You know, <coughs> pardon me. Uh, let's look at areas that uh, rejection could come into your life. And then uh, we're going to look at what you need to do to deal with them. Uh, I listened to um, a teaching just before I came on about an hour ago on deliverance from rejection spirits or the spirit of rejection and we got to understand that deliverance is not necessarily uh, kicking screaming manifestation of demons it's not it's maybe uh, sometimes renunciation um, confession prayer um, and forgiveness then we release from them it's not necessarily kicking and screaming and rolling on the floor and hissing and uh, talking in different voices. That can happen, okay? But not every deliverance is that way. Some of it is very quiet, all right? Um, so let's look at the areas that uh, you could have had uh, or you could have uh, the rejection spirits attaching themselves to your lives. And it's quite an extensive list. I thought I would go through it just so that when we're listening and the people come on, uh, you know, maybe one or two affect your life. Um, and not all. Uh, if they are all, then you kind of like, you, you, you're on the top of the, of the range. So if your parents considered abortion, you could suffer from rejection spirits. If you're an orphan, if you were abused in any way, imaginary playmates, I never realized that. If you had physical or you have physical handicaps, if you've been ridiculed and teased during your, your, your former years or your formative years, if you ran away from home, spirit of rejection, uh, depression, learning disabilities, um, incarceration, if you've been to jail, uh, you could have uh, a rejection spirit that attaches itself to your life because you kind of tainted in the world's eyes. But we'll discuss how you recover. Uh, your, per your parents were alcoholics. Your parents got divorced. You are extremely uncomfortable around people. You're afraid of trusting people could be through spirits of rejection. You wear too much makeup or jewelry. Could be an indication that you're suffering from a spirit of rejection. Uh, I'm just giving you everything that I've come across. Suicide, you've contemplated suicide. 
uh, you've always been taken advantage of. Many of us have from time to time. But it would appear that some people, it happens quite often in their lives. Uh, rebellion, you were rebellious. You're a perfectionist. Could be an indication that you're suffering from spirits of rejection. Addicted to exercise and dieting. You feel uh, unattractive. You're a workaholic. You have a hard time believing that God loves you. You know, you are perfection in God's eyes. Maybe not in the world's eyes, but even me. We are created to the recipe that he discussed before the beginning of time. Everything about you is perfect for you. And until we get that understanding that God created us in his image spiritually, but he put us in a, in, a, in, a, in a body, okay? And that body was designed before the beginning of time. He knew who your parents would be. He knew the timeline that you would come out from out of time and into time. And the plan and purpose for you is perfect in terms of your makeup. Now, there might be certain things that you control. I mean, if you get to the stage where something happens in your life and you balloon and you get overweight, you can always uh, make the corrective uh, actions in order to lose that weight. All right? That is subject to change. All right? But your makeup is not subject to change. And we shouldn't be running around trying to change ourselves because we then conforming to the world and we don't have the full understanding of who we are in Christ. Okay, and that's one of the breakthrough areas that you have to experience. Um, you're a workaholic. Uh, you have a hard time believing God loves you. You struggle with submission and authority. Uh, you don't have any friends. And then the last one I've just added at there, Jezebel. You know, Jezebel comes in to kill, steal and destroy, uh, crush you. Uh, you kind of have nothing left when you come out on the other side, but God. Okay. And he's the restorer. So he restores us. All right. Okay. Now, what you need to do, and I'll give you uh, the pattern that I went through. Um, I was accused of having multiple demons by a uh, counselor, okay, who God uh, told me to confront because they were out of order, okay, and I didn't believe that I had the authority, but God kept on speaking to me and said, deal with the situation, and when I dealt with the situation, uh, the response was totally incorrect, all right, and I was accused of having multiple demons. So I went for a demon, demonology check, if I can, if that's the right term. Uh, and I came away with a, a clean bill of health. So even though um, the accusation comes, you see, because uh, the enemy is the accuser of the brethren. And it often comes through believers, believe it or not. Okay? They be agents of Satan. They be uh, the mouthpiece piece of Satan that works against you. And he uses people, even people that you know, even your own family. Okay, now how do you deal with it? This is how I dealt with it. I went back in my life. And I'm going to share something with you that's quite humorous. Okay, but I do believe that you've been healed when you can actually discuss issues. And you can actually look at the humorous side of things. You know, God looks at us every single day, some of us. And he shakes his head and he laughs. And he says, look at Peter. Look at that clown. Look what he's doing. And he laughs. Because what we're doing is kind of like, it's off the map. We shouldn't be doing those things. All right? And when we do things and we mess up, he doesn't come with a big stick to beat us up. Okay? He wants us to come back. All right? So I'm going to share with you my personal life to a degree. Uh, so it will help you. You have to identify and dissect your life. So what I did is I sat with a piece of paper and I said, right, preschool. What happened? What can I remember that happened preschool? And there wasn't very much that I could remember. Then I went to junior school. I don't know what you call it internationally. Uh, 
I went to junior school. That was kind of the first three years. And then we go to mid school. I believe it's called mid school in the, in the States. So that's before you get to high school. So you look at that band of your life. You look at the people who you interacted with. Now it could be family. It could be siblings. It could be friends. Uh, it could be enemies. Okay. Uh, then you go to high school, which is an impressionable age, and a lot of uh, things happen in high school, especially the first year of high school. And also uh, when children are young, like the age of five, six, seven, it's impressionable. And they are affected terribly by what we would seemingly uh, say are, are minor issues, but they stick. And if they stick, it's a rejection spirit that's got a hold of you. So you have to deal with it. So then you go into, maybe you into university or college and you take that band of time and you examine it. Okay. Then you go into maybe your first job. Uh, and then maybe after that, you go into every five years. So say from 25 to 30, 30 to 35. 35 to 40, and you look at your life and you study it and you kind of uh, ask the Lord, you go in prayer, you ask the Lord, say, Lord, please expose to me, reveal those things that are causing the spirit of rejection to work a work of Satan in and against and over my life. And as you pray and as you seek him, he will surely bring things to the surface and to remembrance. Okay. Now, about... Um, about 10 years ago, I would say about 10, you know, we often lose track of time. Uh, I was, uh, my father died when I was seven. So I was very sensitive after that. And by the time I was uh, about nine years old, um, I was very aware, uh, but I didn't know what the cause was. That's why I was so sensitive. In actual fact, I got a word, uh, even after we had children. To say that I see that your father's death affected you more than any other of the siblings. And I was the third child. I wasn't the last child. Okay. And I never really understood it. All right. And I was sensitive. And um, I was sensitive up until about the age of, of 14. Okay. Uh, then I kind of matured very quickly. Um I, w I was bullied, let's say, in mid-school. I was bullied to a large degree uh, by um, siblings uh, and one particular teacher. Okay. Now, I wasn't the only child that came under that wrath. But if I look back now, uh, that lady uh, has gone on to wherever she's gone to. But I'm fully convinced that she's a Jezebel, mature, 100%. But anyway, she was maybe in her, in her, in her uh, early 50s at that point in time. And she was the class teacher, so she took us for everything. I was about nine years old. And every Friday, we used to have art. Okay. Uh, and we had to draw a particular uh, image, and I couldn't draw it. So every Friday, we would have to go up to the desk and there was very little protection in those days as far as uh, um, assault from a teacher's point of view came. They had carte blanche. I mean, if we went home and complained to our parents that the teacher slapped us on the head, they would say, well, what did you do wrong that you deserved the slap on the head? Do you want another hardy? Okay, that's the type of thing that happened, which is totally not acceptable. All right. So every Friday, we would have to go up and show her the, the drawing, and I couldn't get it going. So every Friday, I got a hiding, all right? I never realized that that had a root of rejection in my life till about 10 years ago, when I sat down and I began to dissect my life, all right? Um, so the other kids for other subjects would also get a thrashing. She would either hit you on the back of your legs with the wooden ruler, or she will lick her fingers and slap you. And you know, uh, a nine-year-old um, is, is, is kind of in early stages of development. 
So they're kind of light, all right? So you see the little guy, he's holding on to the desk and he's going backwards and forwards because this woman is slapping him from the back, um, which is not acceptable, okay? Now, I pinpointed that about 10 years ago as being a root of rejection that was still affecting my life, okay? And I began to deal with it. And I'll give you the humorous side of it. Now, BC days, I was young, maybe I was about 19 or 20. My first job was I worked in the bank and it was a busy branch. So in one thing, you look up and you just see the queues don't go away until the bank door closes. Sometimes you don't have lunch, you just carry on work, working. So we got about 12 tellers on the counters and I'm like to the right and I look up like this and I see this lady. Okay, and I kind of think to myself, you know what, I jump over this counter now and I go up to, I won't mention her name because many of my friends are still friends with me and they will know who I'm talking about. I say, I go there and I give this lady such a slap. Now, don't ever tell me that in your BC days and even in your, uh, your, your conversion days, you've never had a desire to grab somebody. Okay, because then I'll have to cast out the lying spirit from you. All right, because we do get like that from time to time. So that's the humorous side of it. But the fact that I could see, and I can see the humorous side of it now, is an indication to me that it has no effect on my life anymore. I can laugh about it. I can joke about it. But it had a serious effect on my life. And there's another thing that I won't mention because it's too close to home for me. Um... There's something that affected me most of my adult life, okay, um, in terms of rejection. And that was based in my own thinking in self-rejection. It, it was a technical ability, I put it that way. I, I was not technically equipped in an area, and I still am not, okay. But I now have come to understand that God has not gifted me in that area, okay, I can do without it. I survive without it. But he's gifted me in other areas which is pertinent to his plan for my life. Okay? So I understand it. But I didn't understand it at the time. So it affects you. Okay? And you avoid the subject. You never discuss it. All right? But it's deeply uh, rooted in your life. Uh, and if it kind of like comes to the surface or it seems like it comes to the surface, it affects you. All right. I can't tell you what it is right now. Um, so what is the solution to the spirits of rejection? You have to sit down. You have to make that list. And there might be one, there might be two, there might be three. There might be more areas that you're affected in. And it's normally through people. So you need to release them. You need to forgive them, okay? Because many of them didn't know what they were doing, okay? And even if they knew what they were doing, in order for you to recover, you need to forgive them So and ask the Lord to forgive them and to, for the Lord to deal with them, all right? We can't deal with those people. The Lord has to deal with them because he's the just judge. Release them, forgive them. Repent if you had a part to play in the process. And maybe in getting freedom in the situation, you might have to do it on a regular basis for that uh, pain that you experience to dissipate. And it does go. Believe me, it does go. And most of my recovery and healing and deliverance came when I identified Jezebel in my life. Okay, which is not long ago. It's five or six years ago. Okay, but that's when the major things came off my life because I begin to understand. Okay, and then you need to establish and conform to your identity in Christ. You know, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Not some things, all things. So when you walk into a place you are far above everything there that doesn't represent Christ. You are far above. All right? You're a royal priesthood. You, you, you kind of carry, and, and many people don't get the picture. You're carrying 
the spirit of God within you and it's powerful. Okay? There's power behind it. All right? And until you get that revelation that you're far above, okay, everything that exists that's outside of Christ, you are far above. doesn't matter what it is. It could be the president. It could be the king. It could be the queen. It can be your boss. It can be your father-in-law, your mother-in-law. Uh, you are far above. Okay? And unless you get that identity and the understanding of your identity in Christ, it's very difficult for you to operate the way he's created you to be. All right? So once you get that understanding that all things are subject to us in the power of his name, not some things, all things can be legal, can be uh, relational, can be uh, spiritual, can be demonic, Everything is subject to us in the power of his name. All we need to do is get the understanding, believe it, and to exercise it, to exercise your faith. You know, when we get up in the morning and we, we, we should put on the whole armor of God. In actual fact, we should wake up with the armor on. All right. There might be a little bit of adjustment that you need to do. But once you confront that enemy for the day, He's subject to you in the power of his name. And the area that I'm going to teach and focus on is binding and loosing. Uh, when we do the spiritual warfare session, we can bind and we can loose anything and everything. Okay? With the authority that we've been given in Jesus' name. All right? And until we get that understanding of our position in Christ, we kind of going to be struggling from day to day to actually get through. All right. Because sickness, disease, poverty, divorce, uh, you name it, betrayal cannot affect you if you're in Christ. It will affect you to a degree, but you take authority over that thing and it's subject to, to you in the power of his name. And there are many things that we can share and that we're going to share in terms of how do you stand, okay, uh, when the enemy is coming against you. Uh, particularly, let's talk about uh, Jezebel. We know that spirit. We know how it works. We know, you know, I was going to post today, um, we'd be shocked if we really knew who was Jezebel around us in our oikos in our in our uh, in our um uh, what do we call it in the areas that we're in with family with church with fraternals with friends we'll be shocked if we really knew who is jezebel and who is hardy and how effective they hardy we'd be shocked i got a revelation the other day from someone that i know of a person that um he was very close to, I knew, but if I had examined the situation, I would have picked it up, but I didn't examine it and I couldn't see it. But when he mentioned it to me, I look at the situation and I see, definitely, there's the flags, they're all going. Um, so you need to deal with your life in terms of rejection, okay? It doesn't matter how it came in. It could have come in by a friend. I mean... Um, you could have been a, a, a thin little kid and they mocked you your whole life because you were thin. That could have an effect, an ongoing effect without you knowing about it. So when you go back to the areas in the bands that I, I mentioned that you need to evaluate in your life, um, you, you, you need to have a look at it and you need to ascertain in that two, three, four, I say five year band, like uh, junior school, uh, what affected you? And that's how I came across uh, the teacher that it affected me in terms of the spirit of rejection that I dealt with about seven, eight years ago, maybe, for the first time in my life. It was always at the back of my mind, never on the, on, on the radar, but um, it affected me in my functioning. Okay? And then the, the I think I've mentioned it already while we're having this discussion. Uh, 
rejection is often um, comes through uh, in your ability to deal with offense. Because you've been rejected, your ability to deal with offense uh, is, 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 is you're not healed properly. Okay? Because you get to a stage where you actually practice letting the water run off your back. Okay? That's when you know that you know you don't take offense easily. I don't say that you won't take offense never, because it can happen, okay, from whatever happens in your life. But you get to the place where you kind of like you can't be shaken. All right. It doesn't matter what they say about you. You know, I was going to mention another thing. Uh, I've got two brothers. Um, I take after my mother. Now, my mother is uh, from uh, Scandinavian stock. She's a 1820 settler um, stock from there. Uh, the surname was Ennison. Okay. So I'll, I take after my mother and my two brothers they more like my father. So there's some things that I wasn't comfortable with about me. But once I got the understanding that you fearfully and wonderfully made, there's nothing that you need to change in your life. You know, if your ears are too big, so be it. God created you that way. All right. They, they might be too big in your eyes, but in many other people's eyes, they're not too big. And if they so out of proportion, then you can do something about it, okay? But we should never look at ourselves and look at ourselves in a minimalistic uh, type of way because we fearfully and wonderfully made. There will only be one of us. There will never be another. Um, and you equipped your heart, your look, your ability, your gifting is all linked to God's plan for your life. And unless you accept that, uh, you're going to struggle. You're going to struggle. You know, some people, they think they're too tall. I struggled my whole life because I thought I was too short. And I wasn't too short, okay? But I could possibly have um, performed more effectively, athletically, if I was maybe two and a half inches taller than what I am, okay? God created me that way. I have to deal with it. It's my portion. And you know, a lot of people don't like me. I know that. But they have to love me if they're believers. And I don't like a lot of people either. But I have to love them. Because that's the commandment of the Lord. Alright? But you have to be comfortable in your skin. And you have to get away and get away free from the spirits of rejection. So I'm going to pray for you tonight when we close uh, in terms of uh, you being able to go through the process and deal with what you need to be dealing with. Because I know there's some people that are on the stream that are still affected in their lives by the spirit of rejection. I can see it from time to time. It's either when I interact with you or it's either when I see your posts from time to time, you can, you can see. God shows you things. How? By the Spirit. So let's uh, take communion and then I'll pray for you tonight. So Father, we come, we enter your presence once again through the blood. And we partake of the communion tonight by faith that our physical bodies are healed in Jesus' name. We say good evening, Lord. Good evening, Jesus. Good evening, Holy Spirit. And Father, we come, we repent of our sin of the day, sin of omission, sin of commission, sin of negative word, negative thought, and negative deed. And we thank you that it is removed as far as the east is from the west. And we thank you that as we come tonight, we bless the bread, we bless the blood. And we thank you that as we partake of the bread tonight, that every sickness, every disease, every infirmity, and every spirit of infirmity that's in our bodies, is totally swallowed up by the bread tonight in Jesus' name, the bread. The blood, Father, we come, 
We partake of the blood with the understanding that it begins to open our spiritual eyes, that we begin to see, begin to hear, begin to know that we have a greater measure of insight, foresight, revelation and inspiration, particularly to that which pertains to the secrets and the mysteries of God. And Father, we come, we partake of the blood with the understanding that it elicits help from above, that every situation that we find ourselves in tonight, whether it be physically, emotionally, spiritually, even financially, that we would certainly elicit help from above, and we thank you for it in Jesus' mighty name. And Father, we come, we partake of the blood with the understanding that it wards off every sickness, every disease, and every virus that's floating around in the atmosphere. And we pray a hedge of protection over and around our bodies tonight in Jesus' mighty name, the blood. And all God's children say, Amen and Amen. Let's pray tonight. Father, we come in the power of agreement. I lift up every person that's uh, joined tonight on stream. I pray that every person that watches by restream, I bring them in the power of agreement before your throne. And Father, we lift up the spirit and the spirits of rejection that would work a work of Satan in and against and over our lives tonight. Father, I thank you that you would begin to expose those things that are hidden, those things that are veiled, that they would come to the surface, that every person that desires to be free of the spirits of, or the spirit of rejection, that you would begin to show them, that they would begin to uh, see, hear, know, Father, that your Holy Spirit would even reveal to them things that they do not know of right now in Jesus' name. And Father, even those things that happened before the womb, we thank you that every limitation that's being worked in and against and over our lives tonight by the spirits of rejection is bound in Jesus' name. We break its power in the spirit and by the spirit in Jesus' name. And Father, I loose every one of us from the kingdom of darkness and I bind us to your kingdom. Father, that you would strengthen us in the inner man, that you would give us a greater measure of insight foresight, revelation, and inspiration, that we would know that our spiritual ears and our spiritual eyes would begin to be clearly opened, that every spirit of mind blindness and mind binding is bound in Jesus' name. We thank you for it. We praise you. We worship you. We honor you. And we thank you, Father, that we would walk in freedom according to your word and according to your plan. We commit it to you in Jesus' mighty name. And all God's children say, Amen and Amen. Thank you for joining me tonight. I trust that you got some understanding. If you'd like to send me an inbox on Messenger, I'll answer you as soon as I can get back to you. If I haven't got back to you recently, I've been kind of like, uh, some of you know, some of you have been praying for me. Um, I've got a, um, a herniated disc in my lower back. Uh, that's affected my my walking and I haven't today's the first day I've worked, walked properly for about almost three and a half four weeks so thank you for your prayers I've recovered I'm recovering and we be in health uh, exactly how God wants us to be and um, I've been a little bit delayed because the instruction was no driving no sitting and no walking which is not easy to do Okay, but bless you. Have a peaceful night's sleep. I'll see you tomorrow night for communion. Good night.